Welcome to Binary Jazz. Gary, you've been saying got it over my welcome. Ev like, you did that last week and you no. did it again this week. Yes, you did. Have I? Yes. And I, I'm wondering like if this is all. a recurring pattern. Well, when you when it says recording in progress, there's a little screen that pops up and you have to click got it to make it disappear. So whenever I click got <laughs> it, I just read the text. Because so, I, I don't get that screen because it's my, it's my room. I see. Yeah. Okay. But also... Both times that I've done it, I, I've done it more than twice for what it's worth, but definitely two in a row. Uh, both uh, the last two times I've done it, Allison has chuckled about it. So I think it's going to be a thing, just an FYI. <laughs> I positive reinforced it. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, this is Get a podcast off next time. <laughs> about, uh, well, we don't really know what it's about. Uh, generally, what happens is we find out what it's about well after we start recording, and Gary and I try to uh debate about uh what possibly the topic that allison has brought to us might uh might mean or might be or might be a reference to or something um yeah uh, sometimes you don't have topics and that's okay too we just hang out and chat like a normal podcast does i guess we don't have bits though we don't have like like maybe we should have bits don't we like well <laughs> i mean we have yeah I mean, we don't, have, like, seems like a bit. we don't have dedicated bits, like, we're not, oh, like... Oh, we have dedicated topics. It's just, like, this is the space expose from Gary, and then we mm -hmm. segue into a D&D &D segment. <laughs> yeah, but it's and not, like, I... an established, established thing. Yeah. Established pattern. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gary's wearing an Atha t-shirt, for God's right. sake. Well, I mean, uh, of here. course he is. Yeah. And I'm wearing a Critical Role uh, sweatshirt, so, yeah. Damn. We're, like, sketches of ourselves we are yeah that's fair you're the cartoons of yourselves that i want you to be <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome <laughs> i mean if we're gonna if we're gonna segue into D, &D... <laughs> we didn't yet <laughs> i can share the dragon Let's... that i printed on our resin printer and unfortunately if you're not uh if you're not watching the video you will not get a very good view or look at this beautiful ancient uh white dragon that was printed on, on I, our I will say it is worth um tabbing over to the feed that has the video if, if that's available to you and you're not looking or um i believe i can Chris, share you, you pictures discussed this in your um your forum conversation recently at uh yes. at pantheon yes, yes. You were like, there, there's like, here's the conversation. All the questions are about 3D printing, and I was peeping on some of the photos, and uh, it's excellent work. Really Same. Nice. I was, I was um, holding myself back from being a shill for questions I already know the answers to. <laughs> <laughs> I, my false start rate on Twitter right now is kind of off the charts. I don't know if you all have run into that where you start to try like write a tweet, and then you're like. Nope. Put the phone down and walk away. Or in my case, delete Twitter and, <laughs> and then reinstall like 24 hours later. I don't do that so much on Twitter, mostly because I don't tweet that much on Twitter. But I did have that in our company Slack. Um, I shared that link that you shared, uh, Allison, about um, – oh, what was it even about now? Oh, was it something you shared or was it something that Aaron was it, shared? Was it sad girl music or was it what white men don't do correctly? <laughs> that one. <laughs> The second one. Um, <laughs> Wait, where was that? I missed that one, I think. Or maybe I didn't. I, I'm sure I didn't miss that one. But Let me go back. It was... Oh, wait, no. Was that the WordPress? Uh, no, it was number one reason white men give for not getting involved with diversity and inclusion. That was that. one that you shared, right? I Yeah, I think because it, it came up in my algorithm and I was basically like... Yeah, right, 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 right. Like, I was oh. just like... <laughs> Yeah, so I shared that. Basically, the takeaway is um, they did a study, and um, the reason why people, white men in particular, don't get involved in uh, DEIB stuff is because they don't have time or they're too busy. Uh, and, you know, the, the sort of subtext is yeah, it's easy to be privileged and and say you don't have time no one has time um but you never had to deal with this shit so of course you don't have time um and that was sort of my takeaway uh and um so it was uh commented on by someone uh an african-american woman in the company uh 
in our inclusion channel where I shared it and I started writing a response to it and stopped and then started again and then stopped and I had that I had that false start thing and then that that sort mm -hmm. of like but am I really adding to the conversation am I just like putting in my two cents you know I I'm a white dude I don't know that I need to <laughs> to to say sometimes anything. that can just be inside thoughts yeah <laughs> Uh, yes, so definitely, if you're surprised that Chris is a white dude, this is definitely like a video on episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm sorry I didn't, I don't have a topic for today. Um, I thought I had one, and then the more I went down the rabbit hole on it, the more I was like, this is convoluted, and if I don't understand it, how am I supposed to explain it? <laughs> That's are you fair. so is the intent that you will um revisit that one at some point or, or I, I would like to but i just need to find like a more coherent link that sums it up essentially oh okay yeah yeah, yeah. But we do you have you, you specialize in coherence <laughs> well I, do, I don't have basically because for my explanation i usually get like one or two minutes mm -hmm. and i was like if i can't sum something up in one or two minutes i'm like i can't spend 30 minutes explaining it that's a sure. that's that's something else that's called school that's called a workshop it's called... <laughs> a valid point but this is a show where uh where people can uh send us their questions uh no one does very often uh so typically we don't answer questions but sometimes allison sends us questions uh because she is our listener uh also <laughs> uh and you do have some I still of those listen. i'm a little bit behind but i, I do You're listen behind. <laughs> I've started, I've actually started listening. I don't listen to every, every episode, but every once in a while, because it comes up in my podcast player, cause I'm subscribed. So like, um, every once in a while it'll, it'll come up and I'll, I'll listen to one of the episodes and I'll be like, yeah, that was a solid episode. I have to listen to them by myself though. Um, at one point we were on a road trip somewhere and we were like, what podcast do we already have uploaded? And Rob was like, I've got binary jazz. And I was just like, we're not listening to that. <laughs> I was like, this is so awkward and weird. I can't That's fantastic. I love it. Love it. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I, I don't know. I, I often have conversations. It's not a family road trip thing. Yeah. I, I often have conversations about the conversations we have on binary jazz with with Aaron, like I'll say, this is the topic for, for this week or whatever. Um, and she'll, she'll, you know, provide snarky feedback as well. Um, but I, I can't imagine Correct, snarky feedback. listening to binary jazz with her. That would be <laughs> weird. It feels very vulnerable for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. saying anything that I wouldn't say to someone's face. I just don't want to hear it. Yeah. yeah 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 it's like it's like embarrassed about being a dork i guess nope oh huh? that doesn't <laughs> really frame it for me <laughs> <laughs> well how often you don't even listen to the podcast though gary oh yes with with great intention do i not listen to it? <laughs> <laughs> so you don't even you don't even have a frame of reference for for sharing it with Rhonda. If i have listened to a single episode uh actually that's not true i listened to binge ask Com. The stuff that I missed because mm. I was yeah I don't I I was like everywhere that day except on <laughs> binge ass conference like literally oh. like I was like I that's showed up that's kind of hard like, for the Bye. course for you though <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty on brand that's pretty on brand um so Chris you're about to jump into a question and I'm fairly certain I interrupted I mean I can <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I was, I was, uh, I wanted to hear about you being embarrassed about, uh, listening to binary jazz, uh, with, uh, your partner. Oh, I, I, even agnostic of that, just listening to it myself. Like I have to hear me. Would you listen to it if it was just me and Chris? Yes. Emphatically. So if there's like an editor's cut without me, or <laughs> I'm actually not here like that, that would be perfect. Um, <sighs> That would, like, really weird, that, that would be a really weird. That uh, that would be a really weird version of the podcast. That would be like the the Garfield without Garfield uh, comic strip. I was, <laughs> I love that. I love that reference more than where my mind went. Was also like, oh Looking yeah, it's back. like Taylor Swift's version of her stuff that she re-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> we can call it we Gary's said, version. 
yeah, I love that idea. It'd just be like an empty, empty video frame for days. <laughs> also, I highly recommend you, uh, you view the uh, video of this episode <laughs> as I step back. And then frame. we'll start to question whether you're actually even. You're just I mean, I, I often question whether I'm actually even like, that's it. Like that's, that's, I get that far and I'm like, oh, I need to lay down. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on, on that note, I guess, uh, we do have some questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, what I was going to say uh, is that this is a show that you can uh, ask questions to. We have a co- uh, comment form on the website. You can ping us on Twitter. Uh, those are pretty much the main ways you can get in touch with us. Uh, but basically, if you if you find a way of contacting any of us at any time in any means, probably we'll read it out loud on the show, regardless of your intention, um, unless you explicitly tell us not to. Uh, but no one's done that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> including if, the spam. If you said us something and said, please do not read it in the show, I certainly yeah. would respect that. Yes. Or, Unless or if you want to remain there's... anonymous, that's yeah. also yeah. a lot. Yeah. Oh, if you want to remain anonymous, I think we have a, a web form. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think I've submitted a question once. Probably. We've, we've been doing this for a long time now. Probably anything is possible. We've all, we've all taken on the various responsibilities. Of that's true. Time, that's true. Um... So uh, going through the questions that Allison has submitted, there is one from uh, earlier this month, uh, which is, what do you know about your neighbors that they don't know about you? What do you think they know about you that you don't know that they know? <laughs> I like that second question much better because I'm trying to like... <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, typing it out we, was a thrill. That's, that, 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 that question is, is literally the, the Spider-Man meme, the... <laughs> Can you? I'm sorry. Can we do the first one? I need to like ramp up to the second one. I yeah. Couldn't really, yes. I couldn't what do you really know about your neighbors? What do you know about your neighbors that they yep. don't know about? Uh, wait, no, no. It's not what do you know about neighbors that uh, they oh, don't know about Jesus. you. It's what do you know about your neighbors that they don't know that you know? What do you know about your neighbors that they don't know that you know? Hmm. I have an hmm. answer to this. Uh, I'm glad. I know. Uh, that so we just got new neighbors uh, and yeah. I've met them in person and they have like you know little yappy dogs and whatever um, so uh, we saw them like moving in and 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 whatever um, and we have observed that they rearranged the furniture on their front porch like once a week at least like and it, at first it was like, well, maybe they're just trying to figure stuff out. Like they're, they just moved in. They're trying to like just try different things. But no, it, it's like it things move around pretty frequently. And usually it's just like, you know, these two chairs that are just moved to different parts of, of the front porch. But like there was, I think at one point, like a little like table that went with the chairs and like that's not there and and like i'm just just like waiting to see with popcorn like what what will come when the weather is actually good enough to to mm-hmm. enjoy the front porch like <laughs> like what else will, what else will we because there's also a, a like a hammock stand but there's never been a hammock in the stand yet so obviously at some point i mean it mm-hmm. wouldn't be there if there wasn't a hammock to go there And is that the right place for the stand? I suspect that that is not the correct place for the stand. And the stand will move Mm -hmm. at least once uh, over the course of of the fair weather season. And we're heading into that now. So, uh, so yeah. uh. Let me say this about weather. On Saturday, it was uh, 70 here at one point, or like 68. But I'm rounding up. Who cares? Uh, And the kids were playing behind the house. And Rana just sat there in like... I grabbed a lawn chair and a camp chair from the basement and we just sat out there and like it was uh it was just this like moment of like perfection it was so great and uh that's all I have to say about weather <laughs> sounds lovely uh, oh it was so great was but so what great. do you know about your neighbors that they don't know that you know um I, not much. I can't think you of anything. Need, you need to get to work. <laughs> yeah, you need to. You need to start. I, what about old neighbors? Maybe, maybe your neighbors are too new. Yeah, that's fair. I, I guess that might be the case. Um, 
I did, there was a case where I knew about a neighbor that um, he uh, was uh, selling some kind of chemicals, drugs of some sort. Uh, and then that was confirmed when the police showed up and he left with them. Um, he left with them. My, my favorite story, this is, this is strongly not, persuaded. I believe this is not our neighbor at, at this house, but this is when we, yeah. the, the house that we, that we moved, uh, out from that we lived in previously. Um, we have a neighbor, uh, who is a rapper, uh, who has a kid and a baby mommy who is not, hmm. uh, his current, uh, significant other, um, and for a while there, there was like he, I think he, so it's like a condo and I'm pretty sure he got the condo probably shortly after the divorce or separation because the kids were super young and they were trying to like share custody. You could tell because they were over every once in a while and, and not, and uh, she was over every once in a while uh, and also not. And it seemed like a, you know, typical, you know, break up in with kids like that uh and then i think it was actually when we were uh you and i allison were were in uh the poconos for wds camp uh that um the federal marshals showed up uh at the condo <laughs> and like busted down the door looking for him i guess and he wasn't there i don't think um, and that's probably the weirdest thing. We still don't know what happened with the federal marshals. Um, the story that I have in my head is that there was some, uh, something having to do with, with their like divorce paperwork where like he was trying to like get custody of the kids cause his, cause the mom was like, you know, sort of a trash bag and, and like, like, but was likely to get custody, full custody, because, you know, mothers tend to get preference in, in such things. Um, and, uh, and like, maybe he had them and they were looking for him, but like federal, mar it was federal marshals specifically. So like that implies out of state, like cross state territory stuff. And I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I still don't know, but that was fun. And he, I'm sure he doesn't know that we knew that there were federal marshals over at his condo because, uh, I don't think he was there at the time. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and like, I remember, like, I remember Aaron texting me, uh, <laughs> when this is happening. And so she's like, she's like, there's a whole bunch of cars, uh, uh, like, Federal marshal, I guess, like uh, uh, over at the uh, over across the street. I'm like, what is going on? And then you text back, I've got bigger fish to fry. We're all getting sick from the food. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was late. So it was like it was like, you know, after after the sickness had already passed. <laughs> so so wait, 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 back up. Everybody got sick from the food. Oh, yeah. Well, well, well Allison, well, definitely. I would say I would say roughly 50 percent of. People. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it wasn't nice. great. It wasn't that great. Was the, <laughs> that it, it, it got better halfway through the week, but but it wasn't great. Because Gary, I got sick so violently that I get, had a black eye because I burst blood vessels. Oh, that's like food and that was, it I mean, obviously, like it's food, but yeah, like wow. It That's happened literally funny. after like the 24 first... hours of being there. So it was yeah, just like, was, I met everybody the and, then the and then the next day I had a black eye and was just yeah. like, this is who I am. <laughs> oh. You looked very glamorous with your sunglasses on all the time. Yeah, I was though. wearing looked, sunglasses you have, everywhere. Yeah, you oh. should have like had these like big, like, you know, movie star sunglasses. It was, it was... <laughs> <laughs> That's a... Uh... That's something. <laughs> yeah. So the second part of this question... Uh, what do you think your neighbors, they, uh -huh. know about you right. that you don't know that they know? I have less of an answer for this because I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but um, because we don't have... Uh, so our house um, is the last one on the block. So we don't have a neighbor like next to us on the one on one side and we don't have a neighbor directly behind us um so we don't have like 
uh, drapes or blinds or anything on our bedroom window because there's no there's nobody nearby to like see in. So yeah. I hope that my neighbors do not know about our sex life and we don't know about it. Valid. <laughs> I don't think that they do. The 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 I you know like I keep thinking about <laughs> the amount of difficulty. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep thinking the amount of difficulty that they would need to go through to actually see in. Like it's totally yeah. one hundred percent on them at that point <laughs> if they see anything. Like you would have to be looking. <laughs> Such intent. Such yes. intent. Yes. Yes. Um, but that's that's the only answer that I that I have to that question that of things that my neighbors might know about me that I wouldn't know that they know. I don't mm. have a good answer for this question. I have, I suspect that our neighbors wonder why I never leave the house. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole story there. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like they probably have a story that they're telling about why I don't really go like, and what, I do go places like I go for walks and I like but like I'm not like I don't linger outside yeah <laughs> <laughs> like in the yard for communal conversation so like <laughs> I'm just imagining like like the uh 1800s version of the conversation uh, around like you and Robin would be like oh and she's, she's a very sickly woman she, she hardly ever leaves the house she never sees the sun <laughs> I feel like it's very what's the Tom Waits song like what are they building in there I feel yeah like what are they building in there <laughs> that's their version of perhaps both myself and Fantastic. Robin because what are they building in there they don't have any I kids don't... but there's lots of toys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't think about I hadn't thought about that but that that would probably be my answer as well like you know there's five of us and like Katie is outside all the time like if it's not raining heavily like she's like can I go outside like sure so she's like up and down the hill and walking around the house and a lot of times just walking around talking to herself like okay cool um but so yeah I think that my neighbors probably think that we're all a little off <laughs> they're not wrong though so I don't know if it matters like what, who cares the other thing that they I feel like all our neighbors are aware of of each other is just like we like general routine so that's not like mm -hmm. yeah it's just like, oh, I hear like my next door neighbors have a jacuzzi hot tub outside and I can hear when they open it and close mm. it. And like, it's a routine. Like I know what that sound is and like. Mm -hmm. um, our across the street neighbors 100% uh, know, I think at this point that we're not Mormon. Um, they invited us to a, a scandalous. They, well, it is in this neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, they invited us to a trunk and treat one year at the ward and we didn't show. And they've invited us to other things at the ward before. And we yeah. like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. And then, you know, obviously don't go. And um, so I think at this point they've stopped asking. So I assume that they know uh, by that the fact that we don't show up at, at, at ward and uh, that we do have kids that we must not be Mormon. <laughs> Yeah, I would assume that that is at, that is the assumption that other people come to, and I think that that is definitely a thing that gets discussed uh, too. Um, in fact, uh, to that end, um, we used to get uh, missionaries coming to our house, um, and uh, I, they came a couple times, and you know we've been like, yeah, well, you know, we're one hundred percent not interested, and and the thanks, you know, see ya. Uh, and the first time they were, the first time they came to our old house, it was not long after we moved in, and they're like, "Hi, welcome to the neighborhood." Blah 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 blah. And then it was like, um, the next time missionaries came, it was like, "Hi, we're you know we're we're missionaries and whatever. Do you know anyone in the neighborhood who might be uh, looking for guidance or something?" I'm like, "I don't know. I don't know no, my you're neighbors." Not ratting out anybody? <laughs> right, that too. Um, but then well, after I that, think the answer clearly is the people across the street. <laughs> <laughs> after like, that um they never came back and they haven't come back since so i i almost i yeah. i kind of think that like there's probably a spreadsheet or a database somewhere of like not just like the neighborhoods and who's in them but like when people move because nobody's come here either um to this new house so mm -hmm. like i i i it, like they, they it wouldn't be that hard to like cross reference with public documents and and whatever mm -hmm. and like 
to, to find out where people are and just to have a little tally. Like, okay, we're not going to go there because they're obviously be heathens. Called? Would it be called Hell Listed? Is that yes. what you, you would call Hell Listed? <laughs> Chris has been Hell Listed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> not not Divine Gate Listed. Divine Gate. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I don't remember what it's called. The Divine Heavenly, I don't know. <laughs> no, it's like it's like religious mad lib you're like <laughs> um okay well i think that that covers that question <laughs> as best as we could do uh, yeah so we have a few others um uh if you could eliminate one thing from your daily schedule what would it be and why Um, I'm thinking through all like the things that I feel like are on my daily schedule. Mm. And if, if there are any in particular, then like, uh, I don't want to do that one. I mean, like I could, I could give a sort of a, a bit of a cop out answer and say like, I, I don't do this daily, but like I could, if I could eliminate shaving just mm -hmm. like permanently, <laughs> just never have to do it again, but also not have a beard. Uh, that would be excellent. I will sign up for that. And I know that there's like laser treatments laser, and yeah. like, yeah, I could do that, but I'm not gonna. You're like, but I've seen Star Wars and I don't want any of that stuff shot in my face. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Uh, I think mine would be taken out the trash just because for whatever reason, like our trash cans are down the hill behind. Mm -hmm. It's like the level spot to put them. So when it's cold or rainy, it's like, ugh. I mean, I don't have a choice. I need to take it out. But I also don't want it any closer to the house because, you know, it's trash and occasionally gets to being stinky so that's actually the, really that's a good answer i compost or trash like yeah doing the cat litter is 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 probably in that category mm. oh i think i should give you a pumpkin update gordo. Oh, what's up the what's the pumpkin update yeah, beep, 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 gordo beep, beep, has beep. been cleared so gordo is now in the house with georgia uh it's going extremely well the first day georgia was like took great offense but now they are like they're playing in like healthy ways and you know, sleeping in the same room and, you know, able to walk past each other without taking swings. So <laughs> that's good. Yes. Yes. And he is like the most chill cat ever. He's like, eh, nothing faces me. Except yesterday, my sister in law came over with her dog and he's like, what the fuck is that thing? I got to go hide. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, oftentimes, I think when you adopt a cat that's been outside, they're just like, Look, I'm just happy to be here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> roof over my head, some some food, some company. Yeah, I wonder where yeah. he came from, because it definitely seems like he was a, a a not a feral cat. He he's definitely been inside before. So yeah. I don't know if like a family moved and we're just like, good luck, buddy, or what? But yeah, I mean that does happen. Uh, it does. Yeah. yeah, he wasn't chipped, so couldn't really do much and there have been no signs that we've seen locally so he's yeah. ours now ha -ha. yeah um yeah yeah that's the cat update okay next question will be gary's favorite <laughs> oh um voyager no My favorite oh incorrect okay uh it is do you still consider pluto to be a planet oh no it's a proto planet but also like in our solar system like all the mass in our solar system it's like the sun jupiter and then a rounding error for everything else so like i think it's kind of immaterial like Mercury, Venus, Earth, like, aren't really in the fight much either. So, like, Pluto being out there, a big rock that, like, whatever, I mean, we, wow. Wow. Good question. I like that. I don't have an answer because I, what? if I, well, I mean, How like, have you not thought about this? My, my knee jerk is to say yes, because that's what I was taught in the schools. And because it's sad when, when there's a little animated gif of, of Pluto with like the, the, 
the shuttle or the, the the satellite that went past and took pictures of it, and this and the little heart shaped Pluto tummy was like happy, and then the, and the satellite <laughs> moved past, and then it was sad. Like, and and we're taking away its planethood too. Like, I feel bad for the little heart shaped guy, but like. I also defer to scientists who know far more about these things than I do. And, like, if they say it's not, then I guess it's not. Like, you know, there's a whole bunch of other things out there, too, that we've never even had a conversation about. At least here's, I haven't. Yeah. Here's, uh, a, here's know, a fun so, one. So the Voyager stuff. I've been thinking about Voyager a lot. Uh, 43 years ago, right? Voyager uh, 2 launched. It's been traveling at about 33,000 miles an hour, roughly, for 43 years. Uh and in just the last five years, it has gotten to the point where we're like, oh, yeah, we're pretty sure it's outside of our solar system. But like, it's kind of hard to tell because it's not like there's like there's no signs or anything like now leaving the solar system. So um, <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, <laughs> wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> like, that be how scary? did the sign even get here? <laughs> we're already out here building the sign. Why don't we just keep going? <laughs> um, but it's, it's, the, it's like the furthest thing, human-made thing from Earth. And... In 40,000 years, it'll reach the next solar system that it's pointed towards. Like, it's, it's, just, it's just baffling. It's baffling. It's so, so big out there and empty. And that's why we need to, uh, to uh, uncover wormhole travel technology or mm. hyperspace, yeah. light speed, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Faster than life travel. Faster than light, not life. Although that maybe that too. Uh. it's it's funny because like sci-fi we're like oh yeah traveling fast and speed of light obviously makes all this work but there's so many other things that are solved in science fiction that like 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 gravity apparently is a thing both on ships and it's yeah, like yeah it's a solved it's problem like perfectly fine on every planet like which <laughs> which, what <laughs> what like and if you How? if you dig if you poke too hard at the gravity thing in particular, you'll come yeah. up with things that are like you, like there's the gravity boots idea where you have boots that just like magnetically but, connect but to the floor. But it's How does that work? Okay, fine. Right, keep going. Right. Yes, that's not you have you have that as an option, uh, and then you but, but that doesn't make sense in any of like the movies and TV shows and books and whatever because if you were just relying on gravity boots, then stuff would still be floating in the air, right? Um, and then there is the like, oh well, there's some sort of like centrifugal force thing that the ship is doing. Or like that it that's yeah. like it's creating this like it's like spinning around in a circle really Space fast Odyssey, or something yeah, yeah. yeah. um to Which to create that, the that, gravity that hotel up there is amazing keep going yeah <laughs> well I mean really those nice. are sort of the, the the main things is is like oh. there's either some sort of an artificially created gravity which like if you if you prod at that that particular thing too too much you'll you'll start to like pull away the the fabric of of that particular assumption and then there's the the gravity boots thing which already like from a from a the get-go the gravity boots thing has has major holes in it but but think about like the um i like uh, i like the gravity the... socks from space odyssey <laughs> right like the flight attendant is like walking and uh the passenger's like asleep and his like pen floats out of his pocket and she plucks it up and puts it back and it's just i i like i like the space part of that movie is so beautiful and uh i'm gonna watch that today i like the uh the the shows usually like tv it's like like I'm, i'm thinking of like uh um agents of shield where they they started to get into the the space stuff and they just they just retrofitted their their airplane uh for space travel they just they just did it they just you know <laughs> just sure. retrofitted their their super high tech airplane to make it you know uh you know go through uh, the earth's atmosphere and be perfectly fine uh in you know uh space with with no oxygen and uh <laughs> you know uh and also no gravity and like everything was just totally fine it just like yeah. just you know, just it just worked it like 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 apple it just worked just a piece of um, cake. yeah uh, the gravity thing's a problem for me <laughs> we're still talking about pluto yeah i guess so <laughs> <laughs> uh last question in the final three and a half minutes uh, what is the most unusual thing in your wallet, pocket, or purse right at this moment? My pockets are empty at this moment. 
Um, in my wallet, what do I carry that's weird? I'm trying to find out. <laughs> You're like, I guess it's a hard question because to you, it wouldn't be weird. But yeah. I, like, um, if you handed yeah. me your wallet, I might be like, what's this? <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess the only thing that that would be weird is th this wallet that I have uh, is one that was part of a Kickstarter project. It has a little button on the bottom that if I push the button, all my cards slide up, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, so they fit inside here, uh, this little slot. Um, the so, wallet itself. Yeah, the wallet itself is, is, <laughs> is, is, is non-traditional. So like you, you grab your wallet every morning, regardless of whether I'm going to assume you're not leaving. The I house. just leave my wallet in my pants and I, you know, wash my pants when they're dirty. Okay. Um, yeah, my wallet. That way I never walk time. out the door without my wallet because that happens. Sure. Yeah. My wallet and keys go to the same spot. They're on my nightstand and um, I only get them if I'm leaving the house. So like Saturday, I had to go to the grocery store to get um, food for the Super Bowl. And uh, and I have this problem where I grab the wrong set of keys pretty much every time. Doesn't matter which vehicle I plan to take, I grab the wrong set. So I walk out the door and then have to walk back in and get the correct set of keys. That's kind of kind of how I do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, like today, like my wallet and keys are still sitting on the nightstand, and they will be there all day because I have no intention of leaving the house. So, I mean, I might like walk outside, but I'm not driving anywhere. Could you guys hear that siren? I'm just mm -mm. okay. Cool. <laughs> My, t my town has this uh, like siren that goes off for the volunteer fire department, mm. <laughs> but it like radiates across the town. And I'm like, I wonder if anybody else can hear that. <laughs> there is a, so we live not far from uh, an oil refinery. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, of which there are several close to residential uh, places. What? Yeah. Why? Because Utah. Why would they refine oil so close? But I mean, so far inland. Like, why, wouldn't it make more sense to do it like where it's off-road and then transport? No, there, there's the like there's like product? pipelines all over the place. We've had spills. It's I don't it, I don't understand. Uh, anyway, this straws we're, like, we're, we're sipping up. Yeah, we're not we're not far oil. from an oil refinery, and every day at four yeah. o'clock exactly, there oh. is sort of a, an a test, uh, like an alarm test, where it does like a. Burp, burp, and then it like broadcasts a message and the message is usually like this is a test of blah 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 uh, every once in a while you hear that you hear that alert when there is a problem because yeah. we've heard that before too and that's even more alarming but like every day at four like exactly at four o'clock like i know like it's the end of the day because they're doing their they're doing their the, the refineries doing their their test when i worked in downtown jacks there was uh every day at noon and at 5 p.m where the um was the big like sounding alarm for the union job working um, at the like water treatment facility that happened to be like within like downtown limits. Um, and you could hear that like everywhere downtown, uh, which was kind of cool. Every once in a while- I always like to be in my car driving home when I heard it. If I heard it while I was still at work, I'm like, damn it. I think, I think to answer your question, uh, Gary, of, of why so far inland is because it's also pretty close to access to uh, railroad tracks. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.